We've all seen Breaking Bad and Ozark and Stranger Things and all these other amazing programs that have been out on Netflix down the years. But how many of you have heard of the Netflix program called The English Game, which follows the story of a team called Darwin FC? Well, nowadays Darwin FC, or AFC as they are known, are a Phoenix club. And this is them here, made famous by Netflix and of course they were famous before to football aficionados but I'm sure it would have brought a lot more attention to the club here that is now here today and yeah the story is absolutely amazing they are basically what's the best way of putting this are they the founders of football I wouldn't call them quite the founders of football but they were certainly pioneers in the earliest stages of football we will be getting into it all please stick around it's an amazing story of how a team of working class mill workers went to challenge the status quo and challenge the old Etonians and the public school boys and the elites who ran football at the time they weren't supposed to play players the elites that ran football wanted working class teams to still be um, kind of not as good as them and not have to not be able to challenge the bigger teams but yeah Darwin FC threw caution to the wind they did amazing in the FA Cup which was the most prestigious competition in the world at the time they were there during the origins of the Football League as well their story is amazing so please stick around And look here, as you can see, they are called the Salmoners, the Salmoners Lounge, and I will be telling you about why they do have that nickname in just a second, but I need to show you this board here. So, that man there is the main subject of the Netflix program. Basically, that man there is Fergus Souter. He is considered by many as the very first professional paid player ever. So what a pioneer of football he was. And um, yeah, at the time of him coming in, the FA Cup was a very exclusive competition played only by like really posh schools and like the old Etonians have won it a few times and Wanderers if you look back at the earlier stages of the FA Cup. But this team here, a team of mill workers, working class lads, lads who really weren't supposed to win it were um, yeah, challenging the status quo, like I say, and they were trying to compete against the uh, old Etonians. And if you watch the series, you'll see how hard it was and how kind of discriminatory the, um, the old guard were to newer working class teams like this one that you see right now. And they were the first ever working class team to get to the quarterfinals of the FA Cup. And uh, yeah, they never went on to win it, sadly, but... Um, it wasn't long after them trying to win it themselves that Blackburn Olympic won it. That was, um, yeah, that was the 12th ever edition of the FA Cup. The other 11 were won by, like I say, yeah, the old public school boys and stuff. But just look at some of this stuff, look. I'll get onto that in a second. That's an important story, but this here is just amazing. So this is when they were in one of the earliest ever Division II type, um, leagues ever so yeah look at that look at some of the teams that are on there so you've got small heath that is the precursor to birmingham city and peaky blinders fans will know the name small heath from uh yeah that is where the peaky blinders are from of course sheffield united are on there grimsby on a darwin look finished third and uh yeah look there's other teams in there crew alexandra who are still around lincoln city northwich victoria but then yeah there's a few look at port vale Burslem Port Vale, they've obviously changed their name just to Port Vale now. So absolutely amazing to think of Darwin and Darwin, sorry, and just yeah, look at some of the teams that are around. Obviously Small Heath, Birmingham City, now Sheffield United. Look, they're two teams that two massive teams. Sheffield obviously in the Prem. Birmingham have been in the Premier League in, you know, the last twenty years or whatever. But Darwin now, of course, as you can see out of these doors here, and now a smaller Phoenix club, a non-league team. But what could have been for this team, eh? You think of them being just a few places below Sheffield United and Birmingham City, above Grimsby and the likes of Walsall and Port Vale and Crewe and Lincoln. What could have been? They could be a huge team now, but still, they have an absolutely amazing story and they're a really, really lovely, well-run non-league club. Just look at this. And honestly, yeah, you have to watch the English game on Netflix, but this guy here is basically one of the biggest pioneers, legends in football. If it wasn't for him, we probably wouldn't have the game that we have today. The FA Cup certainly wouldn't be the same. The Football League wouldn't be the same. Football around the world wouldn't be the same without that very man laid on the floor there. Absolutely amazing stuff. We've looked at their Division 2 table. They're in in 1892. 
And um, yeah, just to prove how long ago that was that they were playing, they have now been playing here at this ground for over 120 years. And um, I'll be telling you a little bit more about that in a minute, but just look at this. So. As you can see down there, Darwin Football Club returning from London after an 11-1 defeat by Arsenal in the FA Cup 1931. When they got down there, there was an issue with their own kit, so they had to wear an old Arsenal one that was lying around, an old washed out one, Arsenal of course play in red, but the fact that the kit was so washed out and old, it was actually pink, the kit that Darwin had to use as the away team at Arsenal, hence the name today, The Salmoners. Look, to talk about the modern game for a second, this is an artificial turf. Not seen one of these in England before. I usually see a lot of these up in Scotland, but I was just chatting to one of the groundsmen here and he told me it's very similar to Hamilton and Livingston's um, surface. So yeah, please do drop me a, uh, a Hamilton or a Livingston in the comments. But yeah, basically, you have to watch the English game. It gives you an amazing rundown, like I say, of um, of the game and how it was. It was an exclusive sport for like public school boys and stuff like that. And the fact that, um, you know, mill workers and stuff, they were looked down upon by the higher classes. And uh, yeah, they were trying to challenge those um, elites in football, which was kind of their sport. It was a gentleman's sport. It should have been played by amateurs, they thought. And um, it's actually similar to Queen's Park. They believed that it should have been played by amateurs and um, they were opposed to the football league and stuff and opposed to paying players. But it was teams like Darwin, Blackburn, Rovers, Blackburn Olympic as well, a team called Blackburn Olympic who, yeah, went against all that, tried to pay players and tried to, um, yeah, make football into a game for everyone rather than just for the top few. And yeah, Fergus Suter, the guy that I showed you in there laying down in that photo, he was one of the pioneers, probably the first paid player by some accounts. There's a few different accounts that say it's someone else, but yeah, um, he was brought in from Scotland. He was Glaswegian. He played for Partick, which are now, of course, Partick Thistle. And um, a lot of people, Obviously, the um, the Netflix documentary is called The English Game. However, an English team brought in a Scottish player to um, yeah try and make them better. And he brought a passing style of play. He brought tactics. You see it in the documentary how um, different he thought, or in the series rather, how different he thought to the English players who were a little bit more disorganized. A lot of people do think the game is English and hence the uh, title of the program, The English Game. But yeah, maybe um, from what I've seen anyway, it seems like it was more of an English and a Scottish thing and uh, yeah maybe I was just chatting to someone there said uh, maybe they should have called it the people's game instead but yeah look just look at this I am now stood on the pitch at where the first ever professional player would have played and um, yeah if it wasn't for him if it wasn't for this place maybe I wouldn't be vlogging maybe we wouldn't have the Champions League maybe we wouldn't have the World Cup so um, yeah please do remember to smash that like button before we get into more facts about this amazing club <laughs> The facilities at this place are absolutely amazing. I've just been shown into the dressing room and as you can see, look at this. This is better than some league club dressing rooms that I've seen in Scotland and potentially maybe even England. And yeah, just look at this. This, I don't even know where to begin. Like, look, even the showers look amazing. But um, yeah, look, this is the crest of AFC Darwin and the old club just used to be Darwin Football Club, but as is the case with a lot of Phoenix clubs these days, you see it with AFC Wimbledon, AFC Berry. This is a Phoenix club of the old team. Um, I will get into it in just a second, but basically, yeah, they've kept um, the old uh, the old Latin motto, absque labore nihil. I'm not even gonna, that is probably the worst pronunciation of all time, but it means nothing without labor. This isn't the site at which the old changing rooms used to be. These are new changing rooms, but to think that I'm now in the changing room of AFC Darwin, the team of the Netflix series, the English game, the team who pioneered football, who without this team, I don't think football would be the same. And that's what I was just chatting to a few of the guys about there, that 
you know, without this team here, football wouldn't have been the same. And um, yeah, Darwin got so close to winning the FA Cup. They were the pioneers in trying to uh, win the FA Cup and take it from the hands of the rich and the powerful and uh, bring it to the uh, hands of the working class. Eventually it was, yeah, Blackburn Olympic. And uh, AFC Darwin's star player, the man they brought from Scotland, the man they paid to come from Scotland, left them to go to Blackburn. And he himself won three FA Cups at Blackburn Rovers. And um, yeah, had he have stayed here and won three FA Cups here, maybe we'd see AFC Darwin or Darwin FC in the Premier League and in the Championship, as opposed to down in the non-league. And you've now got Blackburn, of course, who are in the Championship and have been in the Premier League for years gone by and stuff like that as well. So how the landscape of football changed just from that one transfer of, yeah, Suter leaving here and going to Blackburn is amazing, but the fact that he came here and did what he did puts Darwin on the map, and it's an amazing, amazing story. The original club was formed in 1870. It was a club for the mill workers. That is a common sight across Britain. So many clubs were formed from working class um, factories and stuff like that, towns and cities that, you know, wanted something to do at the weekend. Football was a growing sport. And uh, yeah, this club was made for the mill workers of the area of Darwin. They did play, uh, like I say, like I showed you in there earlier, some football league back in the 1800s. But um, in the late 1800s, they did pull out of the Football League and they started playing in the Lancashire Regional Leagues instead. But yeah, just think of where they could be now. If Suter didn't leave to go to Blackburn, could Darwin have been a Prem team or a Championship team? Let me know in the comments below. But yeah, their most famous moments come from their cup exploits, from challenging in those first early editions of the Football Association Cup, the FA Cup, to playing against Arsenal in the 1930s when they were then, of course, a non-league team. And um, yeah, they had to wear the Arsenal kit and became the Salmoners and stuff like that. Absolutely amazing. Look what a sunny day this is. I can't believe I'm here making this story. This is absolutely unreal. This really is like, I know we think of Barcelona, Real Madrid, Bayern Munich, Man United. This is one of the biggest football teams in the world. If you think about football and the stepping stones that the sport has made to get to where it is today, this really is one of the biggest in that story, surely. Sadly, the club did hit financial trouble in 2009 and the club were officially wound up. However, yes, this club that is here just now, Phoenix Club, was born in their name. And yeah, they were able to uh, come to some sort of deal where they could play at the original ground of the old club, the anchor ground here. And um, yeah, I'm very glad that they did because they get to keep some of that identity. They get to play on the same pitch that the old team did, that, that Suter did and Love did, and all those amazing legendary players. And yeah, just from watching the program, I just feel so lucky to be here right now. This is absolutely class. And yeah, sadly the club have um, fallen on a little bit of hard times, I guess you could say during um, the last year year and a bit for obvious reasons there are a few hills behind those like fences and gates over there where you can stand and watch games from so when there was matches here that were having to be played behind closed doors people were still turning up outside to watch and yeah obviously the club were missing out on ticket sales and stuff like that but people were still watching and probably gathering in a smaller uncontrolled area whereas they could have you know tried to let fans in here the authorities that is and uh, had them in a controlled environment and the club would still be getting the money from the people who want to come and watch the football matches but that's a different kind of issue I suppose it's we're kind of getting towards an end to that kind of stuff now you'd hope and uh, yes yeah, soon enough Hopefully we can uh, come back here on the channel and uh, watch a match here. That would be absolutely tremendous. But yeah, what a club. What a club. Without this team, there wouldn't have been, you know, the uh, battle for the FA Cup um, between working class and the upper classes of society at the time. And um, yeah, ever since Blackburn Olympic won it, when teams like Darwin, Blackburn Olympic, Blackburn Rovers were, you know, challenging for the cup, um, ever since they won it, no amateur slash public school team have ever won it again. So the public school lot and their, you know, 
kind of ethos of it being an amateur game and that you shouldn't be p played, uh, shouldn't be paid, sorry, for playing, was uh, under threat, and they saw that. Um, as professionalism was creeping in and to be fair they were right because at the end of the day they didn't want people taking over their game with money and with you know working class people at the end of the day they wanted to keep it exclusive for themselves and you can see that once one team won it they've always gone on to win it now every single time the FA Cup has been won by a professional team that's obviously continued through the modern day of course it has and yeah, they were right to be scared of this new class of people coming through who wanted to play the beautiful game, their game as they called it, and yeah, eventually um, other teams would start to win it, and we have the football that we have today thanks to this team here. What a glorious day to come and investigate this stadium. Please do remember to hit that like button and subscribe if you aren't already. There is so much football content coming. I don't want you to miss out on. Please comment your club down below and I will try to get there as soon as I can. I've had, yeah, requests for Kidderminster, Blackpool, Bolton, Wigan, every, like loads of teams. I'm, I'm gonna try and get to every single one that I can. Thank you so much for watching. Please do hit that like button before I leave you. I will leave some videos around my head so you can keep watching my content. Go and check out The English Game on Netflix and uh, yeah go and follow Darwin on Twitter or Instagram or whatever they have an amazing story it's so sunny here look there's their badge I could not be more buzzing to have been here today thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one